Welcome back. So I did make a wood wall art not too long ago, but I wanted to make another one just to give you guys a different take on it and a different design option. There's also a lot of things that I have learned now along the way that I want to share. And I did hear back from some of you that you aren't quite comfortable using power tools yet. So in this video, I'm making sure to let you know of other tools that you can use. I will also list them down below in the description. And I also tried a different tool that's more of a beginner tool in cutting down all of the edges. So watch along and hopefully this video will help you with your next sign. So if you have a smaller shop, I bet you find that sometimes you have to do just a little bit of rearranging before starting your project so you can fit in there. I'm starting off by cutting down the plywood to 16 and a half inches. Then I'm heading over to the miter saw and I'm going to cut it to 28 and a half inches over there. I want my sign to end up being 18 inches by 30 inches. So you just have to remember to account for the frame. If you don't feel comfortable using power tools, you can always have your local hardware store cut down plywood for you. I like to mark out the center of my board just to give me some reference lines to go off of. Now I'm headed back over to the table saw. I forgot to cut down one board. So I'm just taking one of the lathe strips and I'm cutting it down to half an inch. And this will end up being the center of my sign. Here again, if you don't have a table saw or you just don't feel quite comfortable with this cut, just head to your local hardware store and hit up the trim section and find a piece that's already to size and will be a good fit for the middle of your sign. Now I head over to the miter saw and I just cut 45s in these lathe strips and I like to just put them all out on the sign first before dealing with my design. I should also mention if you don't have a miter saw you can still totally do this project. You'll just want to buy a miter box and use a manual saw. Make sure that you cut yours extra long. When you cut in your pattern, you're going to be cutting off a little bit of the board each time because you have to account for what the saw blade takes off. You will see the last few pieces that I put on the top, I actually change the direction that the boards go. Now that I have all the boards on, I can really take a look at it and create my pattern. I like to just draw it on with a pencil and stand back and make sure that it's the look that I want. Then once I have it all done, I head over to the miter saw and I take the pieces together. So when I cut, I cut the right and the left side together. That way I can make sure that the pattern is exactly the same on both sides. The nice thing about these signs is that you can change it up however you want. If your sign is bigger or smaller, you can just change the look of your feather. Next, I mark each board on the back with the stain or the color that I want them, as well as numbering them to make sure that they get put back in the exact same spot. This is important because you want to keep the grain pattern going throughout that board and since this wood is not the best quality, it isn't necessarily as straight as it should be. So you want to make sure that you have the curves and the arcs going along that board the same. I found that if you add two different pieces together, sometimes they just don't line up the same. If you're using a high quality wood that you planed down, then you may not have this problem at all. I sand down the edges just to make sure that there's no rough parts sticking out. This is important because if there are any rough edges, your pieces of wood won't line up exact. Now I head over and I just start painting. So here I'm just painting all of the yellow pieces. I will actually put on two coats of paint. You can use a paintbrush or a roller for this. I prefer to use a roller just because I feel that it gives a nice 
thick, even coat and doesn't leave the brush marks. And off to the stain. I usually only do one coat of stain. Unless it's not dark enough, then you can always go back and do a second coat. I'll link the colors and the stain that I used down below in the description. Now, if you're curious how all the yellow got all over the drop cloth, just watch till the end and you can see the drama that unfolded for me. All right, now that everything is dry and ready to go, I just line up the sign using the numbers. And it takes me a second here. I started putting together the sign incorrectly and that's why it wasn't lining up for me, but I quickly figure it out. And you can start seeing the pattern coming together. Oh, you can see there's that one white board that I don't even know how I did it, but I accidentally painted the wrong side. So I could at this point stop, go back and paint it, but I knew that I would have to wait for the paint to dry, which would take me a whole day. So I'm just going ahead and putting together the sign and I will tape it and paint it later. All right, now with the sign all laid out, I just start gluing and nailing the pieces on. If you don't have a nail gun, you can always just use a hammer and nails, or you could really just use glue and just make sure to put a board on top and clamp it tight so that that glue dries with the boards completely flat. Now I'm using quarter inch brad nails here. I would suggest doing this on a hard surface only because your nail is going to go into that lathe just a little bit and you don't want it to go too far or it'll poke out the back of your sign. So if you do it on a hard surface, I have found that it stops the nail immediately and you don't see any marks. Most of your nails you won't have problems with, but there's always a few boards for me that are a little bit soft and the nail wants to go a little further through. Hope that makes sense. You could also use a half inch sheet of plywood and you would not have this problem at all, but you will have a super heavy sign. Now for the very thin natural pieces of wood I have in my sign, I did not put nails through them. I just used a lot of glue to make sure that they held tight. Putting a nail through them would most likely split that wood and I didn't want to take that chance. If you like this, please make sure to subscribe as I try to have new builds out every two weeks. I also have a Instagram if you wanna follow and see kind of behind the scenes what's going on at this current time. So I branched out and tried something different this time just because I know you don't all have the same tools in your shop that I have. So I clamped down the sign and I used an inexpensive multi-tool just to cut off the excess on the edges. So this multi-tool worked really nice. And for those of you who are a beginner or don't wanna spend a whole lot on tools, this would be a great choice. The one thing I will say, I'll point out here in just a bit, that it wasn't quite as straight and even of a cut as using a circular saw. So you'll see how I fix that here in just a sec, but I wanted to point that out here. Everything's a trade-off and you just gotta choose what ones you wanna go with. Now, I do come over to the miter saw for the edges just to trim them up. The miter saw will always give me a cleaner cut, so if I can, I use it. I just bought a six inch common board from the hardware store 
and I cut it down for my frame. Now, if you don't feel comfortable using the table saw, you can always buy one by twos and use them. Your frame will end up just a little bit thicker than mine, but essentially you'll have the same exact thing. And now off to stain the boards. Now, if it looks like there is way too many boards here, it is because I'm making two signs right now in the shop. So that's why you see so many boards here. Now, if you were working on this sign very diligently, you could get it done in a weekend. This is real life. We live on a small farm and I've got young kids at home. So my day is pretty packed. And now it's time to go back and paint that last board that I missed. So I'm just taping around it so that I'm not going to paint the other boards. The most important part about becoming a good woodworker is learning to hide your mistakes. So here's where I attempt to show you that the trim board just doesn't line up exactly. So not a problem, I just grabbed my sander and I just sanded down the edges just to get them straight. They just weren't quite straight up and down. So I just go along and make sure that everything is in line with the sander. I measure and cut the trim boards and once they're set, I just use some wood glue and here I'm using one inch brads. Although if I had one and a quarter inch, I would definitely have used them. So if you're going out and buying something, I would buy one and a quarter inch. So you wanna make sure to hold your sign down as well as the trim when you put the nail in. I found if I don't do that, then sometimes my plywood ends up raising up just a bit and the trim piece will end up in the wrong spot. Now your strength is gonna be in your glue and the nails are just gonna help hold it in there while it dries. So make sure that you use plenty of glue on there and you can just remove any of the excess once you get done. Once again, if you don't have power tools, you can totally do this step. Just use that miter box and a saw and a hammer and nails. Now I just go back and I touch up the stain on the corners and I'm good to go. I use the air compressor just to clear off all of the dust and then I put on some polyurethane spray, two coats, just to make sure that I am protecting that sign. Now I didn't fill and paint the holes on this sign However, I did on my past signs in case you want to see that. So it's just up to you on whatever look you prefer. This was a really fun, different take on the wood wall art that I've created before. I really enjoyed it and it was a pretty simple, easy project.